Let's welcome to the P. Clemental Show, comedian, actor, entertainer extraordinaire, Dan Frigilette. Welcome to the show, buddy. What's going on, man? Thank you for having me. How, how's my connection? It's fantastic. Actually, you sound great. I mean, sometimes, sometimes callers, I can't hear them and I struggle because I'm at a, a third party location as well. So, you know, it all comes down to the connections and you sound great, nice and crystal clear. I'm sure the listeners are hearing you well. So tell us a little bit about Dan Frigilette, the, 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 the comedian. Well, it's uh, well, it's Frigolette, like Gillette. So Frig, Frig, Frigolette. I I apologize. Frigol Frigolette. Yeah, it's all good. Frigolette. Isn't it it's Gillette though? Like, Isn't it like Gillette? Gillette? Like Rigoletto. Oh, so it's not like Gillette. It's Frigolette. Frigolette. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So I apologize. I listen. No, your your good. name isn't the first one I butchered, and I I'll probably no, do it again. So let me apologize for that. It happens constantly. That's what being Italian is in this world. Is 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 no one's ever going to say your name properly. That's how the world works. All right. So so Dan you know, Frigolette. I'm a. I was a comedian before the the quarantine, but now I don't know if anybody's ever going to be able to um, be in public spaces again. So now we don't know what I am. Now I'm. Um, now I'm a guy who takes radio interviews from a closet. That's 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 who I am. Now. <laughs> And I'm doing I'm doing the interview from a I'm doing the interview from a closet, so no, don't worry. It's all no, good. No, literally, I, that's I knew that was the best sound option, so I, I put myself <laughs> in a closet, which is underneath a stairwell. I'm like I'm like all huddled in. I got the video, but you guys can see it on my Instagram later. Beautiful. So okay, so before the coronavirus, the the COVID nineteen, you were a comedian and a real good one. I I saw I I tried my hand at entertainment, stand-up comedy. It's one of the things I've always wanted to do and I realized right away that two things. One is I, I can't deliver a joke on stage so that in essence makes you not funny and there's nothing worse than being not funny on stage. And secondly, I'm OCD so I realized I would have to put in a lot of time to perfecting the craft of comedy because people could be funny around the table, they could be funny at work, they could be funny around the, the water cooler. But that doesn't mean that you're going to be funny on stage. Tell us about that. It's the only profession where people don't give you much of an opportunity. You get like a very short period of time to be funny before the audience goes, no, nah, this isn't it. And then they decide it's over. Like, you, like there's, there's no short, like you could be a plumber and messing it up for two and a half hours and then just get it right at the end and you're good. But any, with comedy, you get two seconds and then people are like, oh no, it's not, it's not it. We're not, we're not in it. We're not doing it anymore. I don't know why we have the least of, and then the other thing I realized is like if I do, if you do like a one man show, you can be way less funny and people, and audience is like, oh, it's artistic now, but comedy, no, there's no, no leeway. Yeah, most certainly not. Now, I'm sure you've bombed on stage. It has to be part of a successful comedian's journey because the more you bomb, the more probably you're more attentive to why did I bomb, why didn't I laugh, and you start to perfect that craft. Tell us about one of the most memorable times where you bombed in front of an audience. Oh, man. Um, or you have you never had that experience? It, I mean, are you that polished where... No, you know what where... happens is, is, it, is, it go, is it goes in waves, right? So sometimes it's, it's all about your mood as a comedian. So sometimes you're delivering this joke that you know works, but you fell out of love with the material, right? So then all of a sudden... You tell the joke and the audience knows you don't love it and they're just like, they give you sort of like that half response. And then as a comedian, your job is to like, let them know that you're still the pilot and you're still going to land the plane. But then when you bomb, it's sort of when you lose control and basically like, you make like a wrong turn and then the audience feels it. But the thing is, they don't know that it's gone bad yet. So then like, we've seen a lot of comedians melt down on stage because they think it's supposed to be going better, but the audience has no idea. Like, that's what I tell a lot of young comics, is like, don't ever tell the audience it's not going good. They don't know yet. Uh, and it's gonna be a while before they do, but if you tell them it's not going good, even if it is going good, they're gonna be like, you know what, this isn't going good. If the comedian thinks it's not going good, obviously it's not going good. Um, All right, so I learned, so, so I learned something. May you, you, you might inspire me to get back on stage. Already I've learned something. So never let them see that you're, you're feeling defeated. Well, that's the old uh, the uh, entertainment ad is never let them see you sweat, right? That so that's that still maintains. Perfect, perfect. Now, you before before this virus, there was a career. Now that career is put on standstill. I see a lot of comedians though that I used to circle with. They're doing these online performances 
not for you know any, anyone in particular except a group maybe that wants to tune into Facebook Live, probably to just yeah. keep people laughing and keep their skills to, you know, honed and sharp and maybe work on some jokes. Have you been doing that? Have you been? I'm sure you've been writing jokes, but have What's you been performing segue? at least? <laughs> it's a perfect segue. We have a live show tomorrow on my Facebook page. Uh, I had a guy reach Beautiful. out to me and be, like, and be like, look, we've been doing these cigar bar shows and things like that. This guy's got the name of Open Sky Events. And he said, look, let's put a team together and let's get a, let's get a live show going. And he, he sort of twisted my arm because I've been... I've been hesitant because it is, it's hard to stand out in these types of things. But tomorrow at 8 p.m., if you go on my Facebook page, you can see uh, the live feed. And we're going to broadcast it on Facebook, Twitch, uh, and a bunch of other places. Uh, and then hopefully we get the feed and then get that up on the Internet elsewhere. But it'll be live on my YouTube, live on my, on my Facebook. I got Sylvia Sage, who's a comedian and adult film actress. We got Gus Constantelis, who's a super funny dude, and Zach Petrovich, who's uh, super funny and then has moved home to, uh, to hide out with his folks during the quarantine. So that should be a fun discussion. Beautiful. So that's 8 p.m. tomorrow after the Doo-Wop Dream Machine. We have a great show here Friday nights on WRCR, the Doo-Wop Dream Machine, taking us back to the 50s and 60s, strolling down memory lane with some the of that Italian, great music. That one, yeah, man, it keeps going. You know, you got to check out Brian Avenue Bob. He's fantastic. But right after, I'll have my Alexa set. So that's Dan Frigolette at F-R-I-G-O-L-E-T-T-E. That's correct. That's correct. You can find it there. You can find it on Open Sky Events Facebook page. You can find, you'll can you be able to find it on Comedy's Best Kept Secret Tour Facebook page. Uh, we're going to be broadcasting live through all those. Ch- StreamYard allows us to broadcast through all those channels, and then Facebook allows us to re-broadcast a live thing. Like right now, you're live on my Facebook. Although it's weird, because they, can they hear me on your Facebook live or no? Right. No, they can't. See, this is a temporary studio. When I was doing my mixed martial arts show, I had we had this thing called the Clem Cam, and that would give you the ability to watch and hear everything that was going on through the phones. So you're you're going to have the recording, the audio that people are hearing on the radio, no visual, unfortunately. So uh, unless you could somehow tie I mean, it I together, I've had of me in my closet, so then we'll we'll join them all together. It'll be it'll be beautiful. right, right. I've had people who've done the interviews and they pieced them together. This one guy, Gary Scarano, he's like, he's like a nut when it comes to technology. He was able to piece together the interview and what came across on Facebook, it, you know, w- w- however he did it. But so, so you're in your closet right now t- calling us and you're going to perform in a little bit. Now, what are other comedians, you know, that aren't performing? I mean, what do you think? I mean, are they writing jokes? Or are they just taking yeah, the time off? If you're a true comedian, you got to keep honing your craft, right? It is true, but the but the craft of stand up comedy is a live element, right? So like we we need that immediate response from the audience to know what it is that we're creating, right? Like even even the the pros go up there and they'll you know they'll t- they'll say in the interviews that they they sort of they need to hear the laughs. This is the big Eddie Murphy debate now, and he's trying to get back on stage. Is that he needs to be in the comedy club every night doing the thing, getting the live reaction, because we're tweaking the joke live, like, at the moment it's happening, because we're getting the wording right and the language right as as we get your responses, right? So if I say, you know, a certain word for a certain thing, and it doesn't exactly go right, then I, then I adjust on the spot, change the word, get the laugh that I was looking for, then I know that's the word moving forward. So you can write it out, and you can have these ideas. I think we're all worried as comedians that, like, after... The quarantine, it's just going to be people trying to do hours of quarantine bits. So I've seen on the internet people being excited that podcasts and things have not at all leaned into the quarantine thing because it it would be nice for us to just go back to regular life and not have to think about this craziness. I mean, that's going to be the role of comedy at the end of this is to get us back to real life as quick as possible, not dwell in the past that we were literally in closets for months. Right, but sadly though, you know, the, 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 the comedians that perform on ships and, you know, certain things are going to be, you know, definitely change where they, they may not need as many comedians or, or whatnot, or it's, it's just, I, I see it impacting that industry, sadly, well, you know, word. because... Is uh, uh, you know, your mayor? Well, I'm in Jersey, but so your mayor went on and was basically like, "Look, we're going to start slow, slowly letting people in from an essential standpoint and a, and a safety standpoint." And he, you know, he listed sort of like barber shops as a non-essential thing and and a and a safety concern. So getting comedians 
getting hundreds of people in a room at a time, that's that's both not essential and unsafe. So it's going to be a while before we're in a we're in a, 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 a normal. Or if there is a new normal, maybe it's just we have to go to these events with masks on. I think Texas opened up for concerts this week. Yeah, yeah, they have. They absolutely now. Or have you performed with a mask? Like, have you got one of those old school wrestling masks and put it on, you know, and or, or face mask, perform, you know, clear mask, plastic mask, a new I routine, would, oh, a new before this, a new character, like Mask Man or something, like whatever. Ray, Mis- Ray Mysterio, the comedian. <laughs> Ray, 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 COVID Mysterio, yeah, something like that. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I guess you got to be ahead of the curve, man. You know, flatten the yeah, curve and be ahead of it in one way. Yeah, I mean, I got a slew of masks that I that I've been wearing out in in public. But the more I read about the safety of the masks, the more I get freaked out about that as well. I mean, the whole thing again. It's comedians were trying to figure out how to um, how to like readjust to what's going on. I mean, you see these big shows, the late night shows have started filming from home, and that's become I don't know. I don't know if that's retaining viewers or not, or if that's becoming the new uh, normal. It's weird because it's like, how do you justify spending all this money on studios if the same amount of people will watch from home uh, if you're just in your living room it's gonna it's gonna sort of redefine how the whole workforce is is uh, located because if you can do what you're doing I mean it's been two and a half weeks right uh, or sorry two and a half months now where are we two at? and a half months yeah I was gonna say I was sick for two and a half weeks yeah you know it's been two and a half yeah, months so it's like so you've been doing your job, a lot of you have been doing your job from sitting on the toilet. So how are you going to convince your employer that you can't do that? That you can't be doing a number two while you're doing your job? After this, you said, look, I did it for two and a half months. We proved I could do it. You're still paying me. I think we all got to understand two. That, that's, that might be the new normal. We don't need offices anymore. I think we're in the position technologically, as, as uh, in this country anyway, that we can all just poo and do work at the same time. I think that's a, that's a good position to be in. Talking to a comedian and a- economist, right, uh, Dan Fr- Frigolet. <laughs> We're gonna take well, a quick. That was the first tra- funny thing I've said on this interview. So was- <laughs> nah, not at all, man, not at all. Listen, we're gonna take a quick traffic update, a little little commercial break. We'll be back. Uh, we're gonna interview him a little more, talk, and then he's gonna do a little bit, of, little performance, man. And we're we're all gonna laugh, and you'll you'll be able to hear it. So no worries. All right. We'll be back with Dan Frigolette here on WRCR AM 1700, WRCR.com, The Pete Clemental Show. Stay tuned. Be right back. All right. Scratch the song. It was your song, Elton John. Today was songs with the with song in the title. No biggie. Oh, you were going to play we're Daniel? With da- no, not Daniel. Man, that's a great tune, though. But yeah, for Dan, I guess, right? Uh, no, not, no Daniel. No, no song. I want to get right back to you, man. It seems like I got a lot of people... Tuning in, you know, you know when the internet numbers pop up with the technology today, well, you can we, see are instantly. We, uh, are, we, are we breaking the internet right now? Well, we're not. Well, for our show, I would say we're we're getting some good ratings. Absolutely, breaking the internet, no, just because we don't have that, you know, that reach ourselves. But yes, for for our local listening audience, yes, it absolutely. You know, if you post it on Facebook beforehand, people tune in, and you know, if you keep them interested, those numbers stay consistent, or if not, rise. So we're. Where where I don't want to say me, meteoric rise, but yeah, all 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 good in the hood. So again, talking That's to Dan Frigolette. Right That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, man. No doubt. So, how besides you know comedy wise affecting shows and your your career per se, how has it affected you personally? I mean, were you sick at all? Do you know anybody who got sick and got no, the bit? No, I mean, man, honestly, my health has taken a little a little uh, downturn. I think just from the activity standpoint, like I was dealing with, um, I had to check myself into the ER because I was starting to have some numbness in my legs and such. And I haven't, uh, I'm, I'm pushing 40, and I haven't had a good back for years. But I've been going to the chiropractor, and it took me talking to a bunch of people, and then eventually a good friend of mine who's an ortho to figure out that I just get a lot of pressure pushing down on my spine because I've been sitting around for a while. I mean, the most I'm doing is driving and sitting. So it's like we just we need to we need to make sure that we stay active, you know. So I've been I've been like rolling around on the ground now with uh, with like lacrosse balls on my spine and trying to like kill inflammation we need to really look at like how we live our lives during this quarantine and make sure that we're still being healthy i'm starting to get to that thing i thought i was making fun of people at the beginning saying look if you come out of the quarantine without abs uh there's something wrong but now i'm starting to eat poorly uh because i'm starting to get the you know the the covid depression yeah no like everybody else sadly you know i i I lost 15 pounds when i 
I was, I actually got diagnosed positive. I only had nausea, severe nausea and puking as a symptom, which oh, I didn't know that. that that wasn't a symptom then, you know, abdominal pains weren't a symptom then. So I lost 15, but, and I ate nothing for 10 days. Quickly, I put that 15 back and then some. So it, it, it is a sad state of affairs. Why didn't what's you going eat anything, on by the way? Because I couldn't. I, I couldn't even drink. I would drink seltz, uh, ginger ale. I would throw it up. I would drink Gatorade. No kidding. Uh, it would go down, but I would then throw up a little bit of the Gatorade. If I drank, I couldn't drink water. Whenever I drank water, I would just heave, man. So, uh, I didn't know those were symptoms yeah. of it. I didn't know that. It wasn't, man. Uh, two weeks ago, the CDC added abdominal pains, abdominal wow. symptoms. Yeah. So many different things. things. The you monster, know. it's, uh, it's uh, what's it called? It's mutating. We're not even, we can't even get a hold of this thing. Yo, and then did you see, uh, did you see murder hornets? Yo, the universe is trying to kill us. We're, we're <laughs> in know. trouble, man. I know, man. I know. Let me tell you something. I'm, I, I'm allergic to bees, man. A, a murder hornet stings me, man. I might as well just dig the hole over there myself, you know. I mean, it's, it it's like really. It's the size of my finger. That's a crazy situation. It, it it most certainly is, but this is the world we live in. I mean, if it's not COVID, it's it's it, you know it's a, it's a, it's a you know it's beyond steroids. So, do you the, think that the president's been handling is trying to kill us? That's what's going on. It, they said the dolphins are back in in Venice. There's lions back in New York City roaming the streets. Guys, we're in a good position now. Let's let's stop polluting the place. Let's get let's get the planet back. The president. It could be a is, big hairy. big. big yeah. Yeah, it could be a big learning for us. But how has the president been handling this situation and overall his presidency? What do you think of Donald Trump? I've been thinking. I've been thinking about this a lot because it does seem like every time you try to talk about the boy, uh, people get upset and they start talking about how it got political all of a sudden. It's like you can't even say the guy's name without people saying that it's not po that it's political. Saying that something is happening uh, or comparing somebody to somebody else, like they did in Tiger King. That doesn't make it political. That's not actually a political statement. So it is weird. Here's here's what it is. Uh, I don't think, I don't think anybody's gonna handle it in a way that everybody's gonna be happy anymore. That's kind of where we're at. Is no matter what you do, there's gonna be a bunch of people that say you did it wrong. So it is it is a tough thing. I wish I do wish this. I wish that. Um, that there was less like sound bites and video clips of him changing his mind. Uh, I do wish that. That's hard. It's like you know that you're in this situation where they're filming everything, and you're just you're just doubling down on nothing. You just change the answers daily, and I think that's a weird way to handle it. That's my only sort of critique. Because I, I mean, look, this is a hard scenario, and we're trying to point fingers about something that no matter who is in office would have been happening. Um, and it's hard. It's hard to say now whether or not any person in charge anywhere could have changed anything is a thousand moving pieces um, but it is weird it's weird to to claim to be an expert about a thing it's weird to say the facts aren't facts and i think it just makes things more confusing because now Thanks, all Patty. anybody does all is the just love to you guys fake news whenever there's any information and so we've we've reached a new level where we don't trust any information we used to trust information blindly, so that was a bad time, and then now we don't trust any information. That's kind of a bad time, too. We need to find a middle ground. We actually think facts are facts again. Right. You know, with this president, although I voted for him, man, but, I mean, the guy's kooky, man, and it's hard to, you know, get, get straight facts from him because, like you said, I mean, he changes his mind, changes his opinion, uh, you know, straight up. I mean, you show him a video or something, I mean, he'll just talk, you know, the opposite right in front of you so well, here's what here's what's great about here's what's great about trump he's the best arguer i've ever seen like even like uh, uh what's uh, what's the guy's name from abc uh just interviewed him in a sit-down interview they sat 12 feet apart and uh and he interviewed him and in brian Muir and uh and brian Muir would ask him a direct question and if trump didn't like the question he would just uh get out of it and i've never seen anybody get out of a question so well and look Obviously, you can argue that some that the, the questions were designed to trip him up, but uh, he didn't get tripped up. And you can say that the questions were biased, whatever. That, that's irrelevant to my point, which is the guy is an incredible, uh, like, debater. And because he, he, he changes the rules of what an argument are in the middle of the argument. And it's kind of impressive. I think we could all learn a lot from that. Is you'll be in Truly the Teflon Don right there. Truly yeah, Teflon you're in a fight with your girlfriend, and then all of a sudden you, you start talking about Obama and what he didn't do for her, and then maybe maybe you're good, maybe you're clean in that argument then, because she can't really prove anything anymore. 
No doubt again, talking to Dan Frigolette, correct? That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm gonna change. Right, I'm man. gonna change it at the end. You know what? I I liked how you said at the beginning, so I'm just gonna go with that now. I'll be Frigolette now. No, but no. <laughs> a, 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 a pre a, a pre COVID change. You know what I'm saying? Post COVID change. Maybe that ignites the career. Although it's hot enough. I mean, do you have stuff planned? Like, is there stuff in the books that are, you know, like you're saying, okay, come on, man, open up the doors. Like, it's get obviously the wheels are getting turning. And if it's somewhat successful, you know, people are going to get sick. But if the hospitals don't get over, you know, overcrowded and whatnot, and it just seems like it's okay, you know, and it moves forward, are things in the books that at least give you something, you know, to look forward to? Or has everything been dropped and you're starting from like bare scratch? Yeah, everything's dead. So hopefully, all the shows that I was supposed to have in March, April, and May get rescheduled. I already we already pushed a show that was a um, let's see, an April show I think to June, like right out of the gate. Just just hoping that that was going to be the solution. I might get an email that says it's not. Uh, I mean, look, you don't you don't spend fifteen years in comedy and then not have an ability to get back on the phone once this thing clears up and get your schedule filled back up. I mean, that's kind of the, that's the main part of comedy. Uh, that it, that you need to sort out uh, as a, to be successful is you gotta you gotta have you know hundreds of clubs and rooms that will book you and that you've worked with and so you just go back out and you start making the phone calls again once this thing's over. Uh, I run the Hoboken Comedy Festival, which is at the end of September, and I'm hoping uh, that that's going to be something that we can continue to run. Or if we have to move the dates, we should we should we should and we'll do that. But uh, like we said before, I'm can, can you get me on the stage, man? Maybe as like a revitalization moment. You know, is there is there is there a part on like a the show? Maybe but when the crowd's first getting in, nobody's really there. Can I get well, any talent, spots? There's a new talent portion of the Hoboken County Festival, so there's all kinds of things. There is. Uh, I, yeah, is there I is there a, a is there a bad really talent good. portion? Is there like a well, bad yeah, talent think, portion where people are sympathetic for you? Like no, you know what? In the past, I really wanted to do this thing as a publicity stunt where I had uh, uh, like like um, politicians coming on, and actually, I think somebody might have ganked my idea because I had asked Cory Booker to come and do stand up uh, as like a push to him uh, running for the Senate because <laughs> nice. I knew he was going to yeah. make a presidential run. So now we're going back five years. Uh, I never got a hold of him directly, and his schedule was busy, and some people gave me some maybes, and that was fine. But then eight, nine months later, he was he was found doing stand-up on a different show. So uh, somebody might have ganked my idea. might have been parallel thinking. But so I do like this idea of bringing guys on uh, that aren't... Uh, comedians necessarily for a publicity stunt, but no, man. Look, I, I'm doing. I'm gonna be doing Zoom shows. I'm gonna be doing Facebook live shows. We'll just have you pop in. The show on uh, on tomorrow actually is it's Friday already. Yeah. So the show tomorrow is is a uh, we're we're doing it as a test round. It's just a tip show. I called it just the tip, just to see how it feels. So people can Venmo in. They can PayPal in if they think we're doing good and they think we're having a good time. And if we can figure out how to be viable from home and how to make those shows be fun for people and they wanna donate some money to starving comedians, then that could maybe be the new model for the next 18 months. We don't know. Who knows, but we do have to be ahead of that. Do you have, you have, you have a little, um, little taste of Dan Fr Frigolette's, you know, know it's material? Hard. It's like, cause there's nobody, it's the same kind of thing. It's like, there's no, there's no immediate reaction. I could there's me and Kevin. I mean, dude, stuff. listen to me. A every week we hold a joke off here. The, the, the weekly oh, really? joke off, you know, we, we give away money and, and, you know, uh, gift cards for local restaurants people get takeout and stuff and we're we're and judges call, of comedy man i mean we're we're accredited ju judges of for that but let me ask you this let me ask you this okay so Yo. so first thing first things first uh relationships have been put to the test doing this i don't know your background what's your relationship status my relationship status it gets better every day with my wife i mean if i wasn't Beautiful. bipolar and really yeah if my uh, with my wife and i met 25 years ago our anniversary is coming up may 13th actually been together since 1995, married for 15 of those years. And um, with that said, yeah, it gets better every day. It really does, man. And uh, this quarantine, was, if I wasn't sick, we might even have like fifth or sixth kid coming on, honestly, man. Right. But, that, yeah, that was know. one of my rants is that people are going to start uh, having these quarantine babies. They're going to have all these weird quarantine names like like sequester and all these sorts of things. Um, all right, so listen, so before I forget, wait, wait, before I forget, I got Matt from St. Louis chiming in on the instant feedback, wants to know all your social media outlets again because he wants to watch your show. Where, where, where were oh, they available? Just, 
So at so at Dan Frigolette is pretty much everything. So if you get on Facebook, Facebook for me is a mess right now because I have, I literally have six pages because we were trying to do the page merge one of these times and they wouldn't let us merge. So Dan Frigolette is the main page. It's actually facebook.com slash nycomedy and that's where the feed will go out uh, tomorrow at 8 o'clock and then I'll reshare it on all my other pages while we're ripping it. But Dan Frigolette, F-R-I-G-O-L-E-T-T-E. There's only one of me so you can find me all the places. Um, I have a I have a couple podcasts right now. I started one about Tiger King. Uh, I got a little I got a little off the cuff about Trump, and I think some people stopped listening. Uh, it's weird that all the people that want to own tigers are also Trump supporters. I think that's weird. Uh, and then I have a podcast that interviews uh, adult film stars called Porn Stars or People. And then when we're on the road, we do these podcasts called Comedy's Best Kept Secret. So I, I'm everywhere. So you can find Porn Stars things. or People. Huh? Porn stars are people. Yeah, they are. They, they most are. certainly are. So, so when is that podcast? I mean, I, that's something that I'm asking for a friend. But when is that podcast? Yeah. So I have all the no, important porn information. No, people podcast drops every Sunday and uh, same Sunday. thing. Sunday, Sunday, perfect day for that. Wow, wow, Sunday, perfect midnight. day. I mean, yeah. Oh the, my God! No, that's what the remember, day of the remember Lord. Yeah, the day? Right. you you gave you gave me sort of your your age because you uh, you listed your relationship in years. I, I knew that I would be, become an old man when I started saying things like back in two thousand and four. I knew if I was speaking in years like my grandfather used to that I would be an old man. But so I, that's how. So I know that you're uh, that you're a little older than me because you're speaking in years. But um, uh, what was I going to say? Do you remember the the the, the Skinamax? All the dirty stuff was Sunday late night. If you stayed up past like 10 p.m. on Sunday and you had a pay channel, you could find dirty stuff. So that's sort of the, the realm of this is midnight on Sunday into Monday is when we dropped the I remember off. growing up when I was in my trailer calling like the, you know, the 888 number, you know, and usually I'd call it like on Saturday or Sunday night when my Did parents were sleeping. Did you call 1-800-FAT-GIRLS? You know? uh, whatever it was, I called it, yeah. I mean, you know, they don't answer now, but yeah, absolutely. Those were my favorite. When we were kids, we used to call those and just listen to the intro, and then they would ask us if we were 18, and we would freak out. And it was all automated, but they would ask if we were, if we were 18, and we would go, ah, and we would get off of there. Um, but we would listen to the intro, and the one that my favorite was 1-800-FAT-GIRLS, because they would go, well, you've reached 1-800-FAT-GIRLS, the fattest girls on the phone. I don't know what they would say at the end of that, on the fattest <laughs> girls you can access. It's really funny. And, and wow, uh, nothing against you. You have the voice, though, but like in the male version, the female, I like know, if you, you know, transcoded that to the female version, it's perfect. Yeah. Well, let me let me try the other one. You've reached 1 800 fat guys. The fattest <laughs> dudes on the internet. The biggest butts you'll ever find. Somebody just tuned in and they're in the car with their kids and they're freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they, listen, nah, none of my listeners would be freaking out. It's all good. Unless it was someone new tuning in, nah, it's all cool. Everything's cool. Now, listen, we're unfortunately winding down the show, man, and getting to the end of the time. I do really want to thank you. And more so, one, one more time, I want you to give out that information for tomorrow night. Because if we can get the wheels turning with people tuning in and giving good feedback and hopefully, you know, tossing a dime, you know, we can keep this up, man. And, and, and it might be the new norm, but at least for now, it'll keep you guys polished and knowing that you're getting some feedback. Even if you see it in words, people with the happy emoji and whatnot, that gives you a good feeling. So one more time, Dan Frigolette, yeah, where can people... We love people... The social media. We love the comments. We love all the things. And if you could share it on your Clem page, that would be dope. Um, Most certainly, man. Yeah. I, my, me, to uh, my 10 listeners, I will. Absolutely. That'd be dope. Uh, but yeah, man, you can check it out uh, at... Dan Frigolette, D-A-N-F-R-I-G-O-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Google smart. If you mess up a couple of letters, they'll find you, and they'll find me. Uh, and it's just facebook.com slash nycomedy, and we're going to be live at 8 p.m. If you want to tip, you can tip. If you don't want to tip, it's a free show. You can watch it. Have fun. I'll be on with two really, really talented comedians and then one really talented porn star slash comedian. Uh, we're gonna. I, I came up with a nice little fun little format to try to make it fun for us and uh, and for you guys. So check that out at 8 p.m. tomorrow. Check out Porn Stars or People podcast every week. Check out Tiger Crisis podcast where I basically make fun of the Tiger King uh, documentary. I couldn't get past episode four. Dan Frigolet, I want to thank you, man, for coming on, giving us a few laughs, the story. We look forward to your show tomorrow night and having you back on again, man. All the best to you and be safe, brother. Yeah, thank you so much. You got it, Dan. Be well, buddy.